Good evening. Hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well today. It's good to see each one of you with us. Yes. And trust you're having a great day. Amen. And everything's going good. And we're... Trying to adjust... Crooked. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Maybe that's got it. Just wanted to uh, welcome you on this, the, man, 17th of May. May. Yes. It's wow. hard to believe that we're that already uh, over halfway through the month of May. And uh, quickly coming up to halfway through this year. Um, so it's imperative <laughs> that we take uh, redeem the time as the Bible says right. um, know the times that we're living in yeah there are evilness around us and those kind of things but redeem the time make the most of it for the Lord and, yes. and Amen. Uh, be what he's wanting us to be in these days it's so good to have Denisa with us tonight it's good to be and, here with y'all tonight and, uh, Yes. Hopefully I'll be at church Sunday. I'm looking forward to it. God is good. That's for sure. Yeah, she's uh, getting around pretty good. Uh, still having to use a walker, but going to the doctor Friday. Yeah, follow and up. So hopefully uh, it looks she good. will have progressed and they can. Uh, yes. But anyway, she's doing well. And remind you of our service Sunday, 10 o'clock at Infusion Church. Come and join with us and be a part of what's going on and let's get together, worship the Lord together, and just have Amen. an awesome time together uh, on Sunday morning. So come and join with us and let's believe God for great and mighty things. Yes. Um, I'm, I am excited about what the Lord is doing. Amen. We are working on um, our trip and putting yes. together some things that to we want to share with you with guys. You guys. In just a few weeks, uh, it, it will be a couple of weeks. Uh, I will let you know exactly the date, hopefully by next week. We didn't realize um, how many pictures and footage <laughs> that we have. Uh, it's, it was truly amazing. Yes. And amazing. So, truly amazing. So we're, we're getting all that together and getting ready, and uh, we'll be sharing that with you. Yes. Uh, and I'll be letting you know what Sunday we're going to do that. Um, but I do want to encourage you tonight. I want to encourage you to know that the Lord knows Amen. exactly where you are and what's going on. Amen. Um, I've asked Denisa to share just a couple of thoughts tonight. Um, but I, I, I want to, I want to, frame it with this thought and this idea. Um, I've really been, been uh, turning over in my, my spirit some things that the Lord has, ever since our trip and some yeah. moments that really impacted both of us. And, yes. Um, and I'm even gonna talk about one of those things Sunday. Um, but it, it, it's the idea of, of sometimes we forget how knowledgeable God is. Let me put it that way. That's true. And, and we, we look at our limitations and sometimes we transfer those to God, but God's God's far beyond, God's far above, God's way ahead of us. Yes, and, amen. And uh, he sees things that we don't even see. Right. And I guess that that's the the basis of of where we have to live our life of, of even in things we don't understand. The Bible says that now we see through a glass darkly. We don't understand everything or the reasons or the purposes but we just have to trust God. Right. And we have to believe him. And and so so there there's elements of that and uh our trip was awesome, just a special time. Uh mm -hmm. we walked and walked and walked and, and walked. walked 
and walks and walks the ball. Uh, <laughs> but it was great. Yes. And uh, uh, we were very tired that last night getting yeah. ready and I, to come home. And I'm sure that's part of what happened, why what happened happened. Yes. Uh, but at the same time, I'm thankful that God's with us every step of Amen. the way. Amen. Nothing catches him and by so, surprise. Uh, Denise is going to share just a moment with us from the 23rd Psalm tonight. Very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, but it talks about the Lord's care for us. Amen. As the sheep of his pasture. And I've read this as you have read this scripture most all of your life. Um, it really came to be alive in me uh, when we were in our trip. Um, God reminding me he is the good shepherd and I'll share a little bit more from that but let me read from Psalms 23 a very familiar wonderful uh, scripture the Lord is my shepherd I shall not burst life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever like I said we've read the scripture and it's always meant just what it says. God is our shepherd, always taking care of us, leading us in the paths that are right, uh, always there. But it really came to life to me on this trip because everywhere we went, we first went to Amman, Jordan, to the Petra area. We were in Jordan for three days. Um, all through Jordan and in the desert area, you see shepherds um, taking care of their flock all everywhere and even when you come into Israel you see it you see it more so um, you see the the wilderness <clears throat> that the children of Israel you know wandered in and, and you see the different cities that you come on even in Jerusalem which is one of the largest uh, cities you, you see shepherds even on the corner of the streets with their herds uh, guiding wow. them the flock, flocks guiding them and preparing for whatever they are in need of right there it was constant reminder throughout this trip of Jesus is the good shepherd and these are what the shepherds do and they explained to us that a lot of the shepherds are like no man's uh, that they're the ones. yeah they're wandering uh, all over um, the wilderness all over the nation all over the cities uh, with their flock, finding the best food for them, taking them where they need to go. Um, sometimes they will set up a little short time residence in an area when an owner doesn't come and claim that from them, uh, but mostly they're on the go. So the shepherd is constantly taking care of the sheep for whatever reason. I, um, I definitely was in need of the care of a shepherd on our trip that last night especially and we were like I said we walked oh it was wonderful we walked four sometimes five miles a day to see um, the Holy Land and, and the, I'll, I'll never read scripture again the same that I did because it's just been highlighted in so many ways and and just amazing totally I, there really aren't words to describe the experiences to describe where Jesus was and how he taught on in the Sea of Galilee, all the different places. I mean, this is, it was just totally amazing, but he kept speaking to me in my heart about, you know, even before the accident, which was the last night that we were there, that pointing out these shepherds and how, you know, he's the great shepherd and how he takes care of us. I want to encourage anyone who feels like, you know, I don't know what to do and I'm at my wits end about anything and, and what's next? I want you to trust the shepherd because he knows Amen. what's next for you. He knows what's good for you. Because you see, not only is he with us in what happened yesterday or this morning even, he is beside us, all around us. He goes before us and he prepares the way for his sheep. He prepares the way for us. If one of us wanders, he's going to come and look for us. He's going to bring us back into the fold. He's a good shepherd. And so Jesus was always reminding me on our trip about that. And it really came to life to me that last night of our trip. The next day we were in the hotel room and we were packing to come home. Uh, it had been wonderful, but there's no place like home. You want to see family and everything. So we were getting ready. And the very next morning we were going to fly out of Tel Aviv to Toronto. But... Um, I was tired, Otis was tired, and 
I just had sat down and was packing and put shoes down and I turned to go um, to get up to go get something else and I tripped and fell over my shoes which ended me laying on my left hip into the floor and the floors over there are hard um, but I landed really hard on that hip but let me tell you I had no pain uh, no problems that it seemed to be um, I even know that when I talk about the shepherd knows everything about us there was a small still voice in me <clears throat> and sometimes when we relive, relive a fall or an incident it's in slow motion so I mean I've done that but shortly after I mean during that time it was it's like the Lord just spoke to me now don't catch because I had my hand out to break my fall like we automatically all of us do don't put your hand out you're gonna break your wrist or you'll break your arm so as I was falling I remember pulling my arm into my chest and just holding it and then I hit really hard um, I tell you all that to say that even in circumstances that we that you know are difficult um, God knows what's best and God speaks to our heart he makes a way he's already there he's already guiding us so my shepherd was already leading me through what was about to come in the next few days and I just give God praise for that um, I give God praise for everything um, because so many impossibilities were present with me even coming home um, but God breaks all barriers God provides a way when there seems like there is no way. God makes a way. So trust in the Lord. I love the Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. And that's what he was doing Amen. for me uh, during this trip. So um, that last night, packed, failed. I laid in the floor and Otis was like, he didn't even know what to do. I said, just hang on a minute. I'm not in any pain. Um, and as a nurse, I knew certain things would happen and what I needed to do. And I took my time and I, I rolled over and no pain, got up, no pain, except for a little soreness. And um, then it kind of got a hold of Otis. We were, I don't think we'd gone to supper yet. We were going to supper. But as I was going to supper, I knew that I was having a little have more leaning on him to, to walk a little bit more than um, I normally had been doing. So anyway, we got through that. The next morning we woke up and breakfast, going down to breakfast and taking our luggage out to the front of the hotel to be picked up by our um, Uber guy that was gonna take us to Tel Aviv Airport. Um, it was more difficult. And so uh, I was able to walk, but it was very hard, but still no, no tremendous pain. But through all this process, all this, the peace of God. Oh my goodness. I felt the peace of God. I didn't know what was coming my way. And I just kept telling Otis, you know, I'm determined I'm going home. Um, God's got us. And I just, the peace. It was so awesome. The good shepherd, the peace that he gives his sheep. And for us to trust him. Uh, so we went on with our day. Uh, the guy came and picked us up that morning, Wednesday morning, two weeks from, two weeks ago today, actually. We traveled to Tel Aviv and uh, got into the airport. The flight from Tel Aviv to Toronto is 11 hours. Uh, and I was like, God, you know, I'm just praying, Lord, you're going to have to get me through this. Um, I actually did very well. I, I watched three or four movies. Uh, we kept ourselves occupied. Thank goodness I was near a bathroom. I did get up and I walked holding on to the back of the airplane um, seats and was able to get in and out of the bathroom as I was needing to through those 11 hours. Um, I was able to take a little nap. I mean, to God be the glory because I was not in a lot of pain at that time. Well, and let me, let me just interject this, and I've thought a lot about this. I, I'm thankful it happened the way it happened, that yeah. at the beginning of the journey, she was able to walk yes. with help. Uh, she couldn't walk on her own, but with help, she could walk. Yes. Because I'm not sure that they would have allowed us on the airplane in Tel no. Aviv if no. she was uh, not able, right, at all. Not able to walk late, yeah. for an 11-hour trip. So by her being able to walk, we didn't say anything yes. to anybody. No. Nothing was said. Uh, we got no. on the airplane and took off. And that, I'm thankful. I've thought a lot yes. about that. I'm thankful that. 
that she was able to do that at the beginning of the trip. Yes. Because if it if what happened at the end of the trip had been at the beginning of the trip, I'm not sure that they would have allowed. They us usually, on that from what we've heard and understand, they usually don't let anyone board. They will call for, uh, you know, medical. Um, yeah. and they don't allow that to happen. But God got me through that. And I was praying, and I just talked about it. You know, he said, you're okay. I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm going home. God's got this. And so we got through that long 11-hour flight, and I'm saying it's long. It was. Um, but anyway, and then we got to Toronto. And in Toronto, we... Um, got off the plane and I was having a little bit more trouble walking and I have trouble with that left hip sometimes anyway. Um, so, but I was leaning on Otis a lot more. We were walking slower and then we got to get ready to make our connection flight from Toronto to Charlotte. All of this is Canada Air, Air Canada, excuse me. And um, so anyway, we got to the little tunnel where you go down and you get ready to get into the plane. And I thought, okay, I'm going to make it. And I'm, Otis is my left um, hand and I'm holding onto the rail with my right hand and as I turn to go through that tunnel my hip blew that's all I can say uh, it was weird but in that process there was still no pain no pain of that movement but I knew it was gone and I told Otis I said go get me a wheelchair um, we're getting on this plane. <laughs> so anyway, he went and got one and he rolled me down to the entrance of the plane, um, talked with the, um, there we had to explain to yes. them what had just happened. Yes. That she had been able to walk up until that moment. Right. And, uh, she was not able to bear weight on that left leg. And again, this okay. is Air Canada. They at any time could have said, well, she can't go to, we're not going to take her to Charlotte. Anything could happen. So, I mean, they could have refused me to fly, but they didn't. And it was all God. And I give him the praise and honor and glory. When we got to the door, I mean, I couldn't do anything. I thought, how am I? our seats were actually in the back of the plane. How are we going to get back there? I'm hopping if I do anything. And that's I'm behind her holding me. Holding me up and me hopping on my right leg. Because, I mean, there is no weight bearing. My leg's gone on the left side. Um, that hip was gone, but still no pain. That's God. That is God. And then plus the stewardess met us at the door and she said, um, I have a first class seat right here open. This seat is empty. The very first seat. The very first seat as you turn the door. Um, do you think you can make it to there? And I was like, oh yes. <laughs> so I did my bunny hop. I was holding me up and sat down and she said, well, the pilot is aware of what's going on. I'm I'm here and he has said it's okay. And I mean, that was release to me right there. I'm going home. Uh, God's taking me home. And until you've been in one of those situations, you don't know what you're gonna do or where you're gonna be able to go or do or what, you don't know. But trust in the Lord because he has you. He had me. Um, and he, she turned and, and I sat there and she said, anything we can do, let us know. And she got me something to drink and I mean, she just took good care of me. And there were two other seats that were open on the other yes. side of where she was sitting and right. I was standing there, but they said, back of the bus. Back <laughs> yeah. <of> the bus. <laughs> they wouldn't let, um, Otis sit there, which that was okay. That was and I fine. bet if I had I was asked, more concerned for you. Than... I'm sure if I had asked, I was like, no. yeah, they might would have. But anyway, he went on to the back. I was fine. She immediately put ice on. What can I do to help you? Immediately put ice on my left leg and on my feet because my foot is beginning to swell. And she just took really super care of me. Um, so we were a two hour flight away from Charlotte in Toronto on Canada, Air Canada. And then they come and tell us that, um, an airplane has broken down um, in Charlotte, and they need a crew from Toronto to come down and work on that plane. So we had to wait another hour on their crew to get on board to fly with us. So it was a three-hour thing. And then, you know, when it when I first heard it, I was like inside of me, I I was like, Lord, what am I going to do? You know, God. Um, how's this going to turn out? Uh, you know, I've gotten this far by your grace. I know I'm going to get on further, but Lord, you're going to have to help me. I mean, because at that Amen. point I was not hurting, but I knew that my foot was swelling. Uh, but I still through it all felt the peace of God that it was all good. And I held tight. I held tight to that peace 
that we all know comes from God, a peace that passes all understanding. I mean, held tight to that because I know the promises of God and I know what God was speaking into my spirit. It just seemed like sometimes the devil was just trying to flare up with a little few things to say, you know, hey, hey, hey. And I was like, no, no, no. We may have to wait an extra hour here, but God's got it. I'm not in pain and I just relaxed and whatever I was in need of, they helped me with. But the peace of God, folks, you know what that is? I can't explain it truly except that, oh my goodness, as a child of God, to feel his peace over our life, to feel his peace in, in, in situations that are uncertain. We don't know what's going to come of it or how it's going to come to being, but God, you do. See, he goes before us and he makes a way. It was not, it was not a coincidence that, coincidence that that first class seat was open on that plane that night. Um, it hadn't been bought and she had made some comment about, you know, usually, but it hadn't been bought. Uh, I know why it hadn't, because God, the good shepherd, was taking me along this journey. He was, his staff, I mean, I was comforted by the Lord in so many ways. Um, he made an oasis for me right there on that airplane, that first class seat. The Lord made an oasis on me, around me, and I was comfortable, and I had no fear even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know, sometimes Satan likes to take things and just, and just make you feel like so uncertain and, and, and nothing's going to go right for you. God took me through that time. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear whew, no evil for you, God, the great shepherd, O oh Lord, you are my God and you're going to bring me out. You're bringing me out. So he brought us out. Long story short, we flew home after the crew arrived. Um, and Otis went and got a wheelchair. The stewards, they called ahead. The pilot called ahead and said, we have a lady who has a broken hip. She needs the kind of wheelchair that can come on board and get her. And they did that. And Otis wheeled me out. And we went out and got our bags. Still in not very much pain at all. I mean, that's God. Um, I was tired, um, but as far as pain, no, not really. So anyway, we did get to our bags, got those, and we got to the car, and that's when the pain started hitting me because I did have to get down into my brother's uh, little car, which we made it, got to his house. By the grace of God, he helped me through it, got to his house, and then I had to get out of that car, and... Um, you should have seen us dancing in the driveway. I just wanted to get the truck. I was holding on to my sister-in-law, Tina, and then I had to holler for Mike to come get me because, I mean, I'm on my right leg, and she's smaller than me. I was about to bring her and me down, <laughs> both of us, but then uh, Mike came and helped, and, I mean, of course, God was there the whole time. I got through it. They got me up into Otis's truck and in the seat, and um, that was a little uncomfortable, but all the way home, I did fine. And Otis got me to the hospital, which they, um, you know, admitted us and did the x-ray. And sure enough, it was broken. Um, but the opportunity, you know, sometimes we look at situations that happen to us and, you know, oh, you know, poor pitiful me. Why did this happen to me? You know, I, I don't know. But God had me through it all. What I am rejoicing about is that in that hospital, this was on third shift that night. And I wasn't admitted to my room till like 3 a.m. People were coming right and left and different floors. And we want to come see the woman who traveled halfway around the world with a broken hip. And, you know, what do you think? And I was like, only thing I can say is God. God did this thing. God brought me home. The great shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. I shall not want how many times have we read that and, and not really taken it to heart? There's not anything that I am need of because you, the great shepherd, Lord, are looking after me. You opened every door in this flight, every opportunity.
opportunity, God. You made a way. You provided all through this trip to get me home and to get me in surgery and, and everything taken care of. And then I was able also to minister to people. I'm talking about a lot of people. And I'm talking about every day. I went in Wednesday night. I came home Sunday afternoon. People were still coming. We want to meet this woman who traveled halfway around the world with a broken hip. How did you do that? I can't take credit. Jesus did it. Even the PT people. That even, are coming yeah, to the house. even the PT, P, uh, PT people coming to the house, I'm getting therapy at home, are, are the same way. And of course, I have found along the way, and one of my PT ladies is like that, you know, we, we know that. We understand. We know how, uh, how what Jesus does for us. And, but just to, um, I want to encourage you to share with people what the Lord has done for you. Um, it's going to lift them up. You never know what the person sitting next to you or standing in front of you or, you know, whatever. You never know what that person's facing on any particular day. Um, a couple of people I talked to, they were just kind of like, you know, but they allowed me to share my testimony and to share Jesus Christ with them. Mm -hmm. So the seeds are planted. Oh my goodness. God planted tons of seeds this past week at the hospital. And I'm excited because he's going to culture them. He's going to grow them. They're going to, they're going to grow, uh, in Jesus. But I just want to encourage you guys. And I wanted to share, I know Facebook. On Facebook, I had posted this testimony already, but I felt like tonight I just wanted you to hear it from me once again and just to encourage you, you to know that God has you um, and nothing can take you out of the palm of his hand. Nothing can pluck you from him. He is the great shepherd. I mean, his rod and his staff, they comfort me. You know, he makes us lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside the still waters. You know, he... He takes care of us. He meets our needs. Um, he leads us. And I just want to encourage you to be led by the shepherd today. Trust in God. Give him your all in all. Whatever you're going through, do not, let me say again, do not let the enemy tell you that this is going to be your doom. This is going to be the end of you. Do not listen to the lies of the enemy Listen to the truth of Jesus Christ. He has you. He has come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Right now, I'm living the best life. I'm doing great. I'm excited in my spirit. I mean, there's so much we want to say, share with you in, in whenever we start doing this in a few weeks. And we'll let you know ahead of time. Um, places we went, we stood there and literally wept. Because of what God has done for you, what he's done for us. Um, so we have a lot. We're full. <laughs> We're full of joy, and we have a lot to share with you. So don't miss that. We'll let you know here in a few weeks. When that and is. it didn't detract from the trip. Yes, right. It didn't oh, take man, away anything. Know. You know, like, and, you know, and, I, and sometimes the enemy just tries to, okay, you know, look what happened to you. Well, no, you know, uh-uh. I received those days. I enjoyed that trip. I received so much. I will never, ever read the scripture the same again. I've seen places and, uh, you know, it just, I won't, one day here soon we're going to share with you because we're bubbling and flowing over with joy for the goodness of God. Uh, and for the love of the Lord who loves you so much. So when the enemy tries to tell you something, tell him, uh-uh, not today. He is a liar and God is truth. Listen to the Lord. Amen. Listen to as it speaks to your heart. So be blessed. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes, he is. I shall not want. Amen. That doesn't mean that things won't come. It doesn't mean that right. things won't go wrong or what we might consider wrong. But it means that in every way, God's got us. Yes, amen. Even the most difficult days. Yes. His grace yes. is sufficient. Amen. For this hour. Hold on to his hand. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Trust him and know. Yes. That he loves you. Amen. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I want to encourage you. I want us to pray. Amen. Father.
We just thank thank you for your love, mercy, and grace. We thank you for the day you've blessed us with. Yes, yes, God. We thank you for your overshadowing care. Amen. And we pray, God, that you would move and minister in every one of our hearts and lives. Thank you, Jesus. You know. Thank you, Jesus. You know where we are. You know what we're in need of. Amen. Yes, Lord. You knew before today. Yes, God. Where we would be. Amen. And I just ask, Lord, that you would move and minister in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives. Yes, Lord. Pour out your peace, your comfort, your assurance. Thank Lord, you, Lord, may we just sense your grace yes, Jesus. in this hour. Amen. No matter what the storm, no matter what the battle. Yes, Lord. The battle Thank is Jesus. the Lord's. Amen. And we trust you. Amen. And we're believing you. God, have your way. Thank have you, your God. way as we gather together this weekend. Yes. We pray for an outpouring Lord, of the us. Spirit Lord, of God on our Amen. service Sunday. We pray, Lord, your will be accomplished yes, in God. everything. Thank you, Lord. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Have your way, O oh Lord. We pray for Amen. those that are sick. We pray, God, that you would move and minister yes, to them. Healing. Touch in them. Jesus name. Those that have been battling yes, all the sickness going around today. Yes, God. God, just move thank and you, minister. Lord. Yes. Have Jesus. your way, I pray. And we Amen. thank you for what you're going to do, for the way Amen. you're going to move yes, and minister. God. We give you praise, thank glory, you. and thank honor Jesus. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for joining with us tonight. Know that the Lord is your shepherd. Yes, he is. Trust him. Amen. Amen. Trust him. Right. Don't let go. That's it. And he won't let go. No, we love you guys. We pray for you every day. We are blessed that you're part of our family. We just thank Jesus for you and ask that he will continue to use you mightily in his service. Continue to support Infusion Church. Amen. You can go to infusionchurchnc.com. Go to our giving page. You can give through Easy Tithe. You can give through text, or you can mail it to Infusion Church, P.O. Box 14281, Archdale, North Carolina, 27263. Yes. Or you can bring it with you Sunday. Bring it with you Give it as unto the Lord. That'd be awesome. And let's bless the Lord together. Amen. Thank you, guys. We love you. We're praying for you. We'll see you Sunday.